Beyonce, she was set to perform for Lyft and they first offered her money as far as like a certain amount of money as like dollars. But she offered instead and was like, no, you can pay me basically like in stocks or Bitcoin or something like that. And she made double, the, like she exponential the amount of money that she would have made if she would have just been paid that one time. Now, do you want to be rich or do you want to be wealthy? If someone would have asked me this question a couple years ago, I would have said yes, because I thought they were the same thing. But now that I'm understanding the difference between the two, I'm often asking myself, how do I want to spend my money as a rich person or a wealthy person? And how do I want to accumulate money as a rich person or as a wealthy person? And so at the end of this video, I want you to ask yourself, how do you want to do these things as a rich person or as a wealthy person when it comes to money? And here's the difference. So first, the definition. Being rich typically means having a lot of possessions and material wealth, while being wealthy is more about having substantial and lasting wealth. So if you see here, here's a quick diagram of the difference between the two. And I want to talk about some of the big things that stand out to me. So first, if you see here, when it talks about being rich, it says having a high income, while it says being wealthy ha means having a high net worth. So I know a lot of times you may see the word net worth when it comes to celebrities or just very rich and well-known people, but you don't understand like, what does that really mean? So a net worth are your assets subtract your liabilities. So what is the difference between assets and liabilities? An asset is something that has value and or puts money in your pocket because it generates income and or cash flow. A liability moves money out of your pocket and causes cost for you. So that's why if you see here, the assets are retirement accounts, saving accounts, investing accounts, the liabilities are loans, debt, credit card debt, medical debt. Now, one thing that gets people, they may say, hey, well, you know, I don't have any kinds of debt, so I must have a high net worth. You can to a certain extent, but if you also don't have any assets, then you don't necessarily have a high net worth. And so it's very important to understand the difference between appreciating assets, which are generally what wealthy people put money into, and depreciating assets, which are a lot of things that rich people put money into. So appreciating, appreciating assets are basically things, assets, essentially what real assets are, things that are supposed to generate wealth and continue over time. Depreciating assets are things that lose wealth. So depreciating assets are usually those things that rich people buy that lose value and or money over time. So we're talking about those very nice cars. We're talking about a lot of jewelry that is more so kind of like custom made, like the chains and different things like that. We're also talking about clothing, right? A lot of these things, they cost a lot of money, but over time they do lose value, right? And then you also are taking they kind of become liabilities as well, depending on what they are, because if you have a very nice car, that car not only loses money, but over time you're putting money into the car. So it really does become a liability. Contrary to appreciating it, appreciating assets are things that you're investing in that's making you more money. So it's something such as a Roth IRA account, different kind of investments that you can have, things that over time do not lose their value. But there are certain things such as like jewelry, let's say if it's a piece of gold or something, that probably isn't going to lose its value. But Jewelry is iffy. It depends on what kind of jewelry it is. Some jewelry can hold value, but some jewelry does depreciate, but that's a whole different conversation. But that's something that I often want you to think about. Now, it does not mean wealthy people do not buy depreciating assets. That does not mean they don't buy cars. That does not mean they don't buy cell phones, right? Things that are eventually going to lose their value, but they put more money into appreciating assets. And I think this analogy is very important well, this idea is very important because I'll never forget, I saw a video or a picture of Warren Buffett. If you're not familiar with who he is, he's a billionaire. He's one of the richest men of the world. And he made a lot of his money through like the stock market and things like that. He was driving, if I'm not mistaken, like a Prius or a Honda or something like that. Mind you, he's one of the richest men in the world. He is a billionaire, right? And a lot of people were like, why is he driving in that kind of car? Why is he driving in such an old car when he can get a Bugatti, when he can get a Lamborghini and all these expensive cars? But if you pay attention to what I said, wealthy buy depreciating assets, but they don't spend most of their money. So a car is a car. A car is one to drive. A car, as long as it gets you from A to B, it does the job. It doesn't matter if the car was made in 2015, 2013, 2009, 2025, 2024. 
if it you get what i'm saying if it's functioning it's going to do the same thing so a lot of wealthy people when they're buying things that they know are going to lose value over time they rather not buy the newest thing or they keep things for a substantial amount of time so that eventually it is going to get old and yes it is going to lose value but it's like i didn't really put that much money into it contrary to the rich the rich a lot of times buy a lot of new cars they buy a lot of new clothes they buy a lot of new every time a new iphone comes out they get the newest one regardless a phone is going to depreciate regardless clothes are going to depreciate regardless all these things are going to lose value so if you're spending a lot of money into these things that are constantly losing value you're kind of constantly losing money and then it becomes a thing of you having to keep up with the joneses and if you look at the analogy it says the rich care more about their appearance while the wealthy care more care less about their parents because they don't care if they have the oldest phone. They don't care if they have the oldest car. They don't care about these things. As long as it can do the function of what that thing is supposed to do, the computer, whatever the case may be, they don't care about the date on it. Because if you think about it, to a certain extent, yes, a lot of people can convince themselves, oh, I just really like that car. I just really... So why don't you mind getting a car that's the same car 10 years older? Why don't you mind getting a car that's five years older? Or even so, why don't you mind just keeping that car, right? I had a friend recently who got a car and she was telling me how she really wanted this car and she put so much money into this, just like a lot into the car because she really wanted it and she was so proud of herself. And I was just saying, yeah, like that's great that you were able to get that car, like I'm proud of you. And then she was like, soon as she pays it off, she's gonna get another one what that's a rich mindset because if you say you care about this thing so much and you say you love this thing so much then why can't you keep it why do you feel like soon as you you pay this off or soon as this thing is old you have to get a new one and it becomes a thing of you always having to keep up so you're always 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 having to spend more money now the issue when it comes to the rich if you also pay attention to the diagram it said they have a high income so the issue with that is they work for money so let's think of something you know a lot of girls are getting into like being lash techs right they're getting into being hairstylists these things which are great but the thing is you do not make money unless you work so unless you are doing somebody's lashes or you're doing somebody here you are not making income contrary to the wealthy they invest in a lot of appreciating assets they invest in a lot of things that make money for them so yes they may have a nine to five job it doesn't mean they have to be business owners to be wealthy they may have a nine to five job but at the same time they have different investments that are working for them so it gives them a bit more flexibility if it's forced upon or if it's a choice right so if they want to take a couple months off from work or if they get sick and they have to take a certain amount of time off from work they're not going to be scared first and foremost because wealthy people live under their income so they make sure they live under their budget contrary to rich people who usually live at or above their budget they live under it so they have some flexibility with that but then also they have investments they have things that are working for them they have things of assets that they know things of value that if necessary they can sell whether it's a fine piece of jewelry whether it's a piece of art or whether it's a stock that they can sell that has value that they know they can live on for a certain amount of time if need be contrary to somebody who has a high income and works for money if they cannot work for six months they don't know what they're going to do not only because a lot of people who are rich live at their limits right so the car they drive that's the most they can afford the house they live in that's the most they can afford they don't have any wiggle room so they have to work they have to keep going and god forbid something happens where they can't work or something happens where they have to take a certain amount of time off of work then it's shaky for them then it's like oh my gosh i have to get back to work i have to make money because i have to pay these bills contrary to somebody who lives below their budget not only do they have wiggle room because they live below their budget so they have extra money to do things with but then a lot of times that extra money that's what they use to invest so it's like their money is working double for them, right? It feels like their, their dollar lasts longer than an individual who is paying for a lot of depreciating assets. And I feel like in the society that we live in, it's very you know, popular to have the new new, to have the biggest change, to have the biggest this and the biggest that, and always over consume things, right? You can't have one Stanley cup, you have to have five Stanley cups. You can't have one lip plumper, you have to have 10 lip plumpers. Like there's this, this, this thing of over consumption that we're so consumed with and we spend money like rich individuals. No matter how much money you make, 
There's people who are making 50,000, there's people who make 100,000, 200,000, and they're all spending money as if they are a rich individual. And rich is a term that is kind of subjective depending on what your definition of rich, but they're all spending money to the max. They're all accumulating money at a rate that might be good for them, but it's like, is it substantial? Is it substantial, right? Do you have things saved over? If something was to happen, do you have more than just your savings? Because another thing I've learned is too, I feel like we're always, we're often taught to have savings, but now that I'm getting older, I'm actually learning the importance of having investments because your savings is going to deplete over time for two reasons. First and foremost, because the value of a dollar depreciates over time. So even if you have $500 in your savings right now, in two, three years, that's not gonna be worth $500. It's probably gonna be worth 400 and something dollars. And as time goes on, eventually it's gonna be worth 300 and eventually 200, and then it's gonna be worth essentially not much. But at first was $500 in this market, but the market is constantly changing. Another thing you have to realize is, if you have to take money out of your savings, you're not getting that money back, right? Because it's a depreciating asset. So it was an asset because it wasn't a savings account, but at the same time, it's not making you any money. Contrary to individuals who have investments, if you have an investment of $500, eventually that $500 is going to grow. But let's say for some reason, you do have to take out $200 for whatever reason. You could take out that 200 and then in three, four years, that still be worth $900, right? Because it's also compound interest, which means when you have investments, they're compounding. So yes, you may invest $100 one year, and then you might invest, and that might be worth $200 the next year, but then the next year, you invest another 100, and now this is worth $500, because it compounds. It gets bigger and steeper and steeper and steeper and grows like this, contrary to if you have a regular savings account, if you invest 500, that's just 500. You invest 200, now that's just 700. You invest 200, that's just 900 because it's just a savings. So I think that's also something important to think about when you're thinking about like how, what do you wanna do with the extra money? Now I'm not saying not to have a savings because that's very imperative too, but now that I'm getting older, I'm understanding also to have, you know, safe investments. So those are things such as Roth RRAs. Those are things such as investments that usually they grow slower. I'm not gonna lie to you. and I would definitely say do your own um, investigation and your own you know, research on what kind of investments are best for you because I'm not gonna really recommend any because it very much so is a to each its own, but just things that usually grow slower and they do take time, right? But at the same time, you're not likely that they're going to very much so decrease. Now those risky investments that people try to do that will make you double your money next year or triple your money next year, those are the ones that you possibly can win big on, but you possibly also can lose on. So it just depends on how you want to make money. And when it comes to things such as saying the rich person wants instant gratification while the wealthy person has strong discipline, I think that's something also to think about when it comes to you doing things for money. I think a lot of times people who have a rich mindset do things that will instantly make them rich, right? So even when people first get into stocks and different things like that, like people need to understand these stocks are supposed to pay you out over time. They're supposed to make money over time. I talked about Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is known as one of the richest investors, you know, one of the most wealthy investors in the world, one of the most richest men in the world. But a lot of people don't know, he did not get to really most of his riches, the chunk of it until he was in his 60s. Like you, and he started very young. Like I think he might've started his early 20s, if not late teens, like he started very young and he did not see basically the fruits of his labor until he was in his 60s. And now he can be considered one of the richest men in the world and one of the biggest investors, right? But I think it's important for people to think about investing and when it comes to discipline like that, what gets a lot of people that they have this rich mindset is they're like, okay, I invest in the stock market, so I wanna see money like this. I invest in this, I need to see money like that. And I'm a big advocate of the faster you get it is the faster you can lose it. So yes, you might be able to you know, hit big and yes, you might be able to make money from this thing, but at the same time, you equally so can lose. And when it comes to having investments, when it comes to generating wealth over time, it's important to play the long game, in my opinion, with how I live my life. Like I wanna play the long game. I wanna have invest, like a lot of my investments that I have now, I do not plan on touching any of them in the 2020s. 
Now the 2030s, possibly some if necessary, but like for the next 10 years or so, I don't plan on touching none of the, these investments. I want them to grow and I'm still going to put money into them right without touching them and letting them do what they have to do and letting them compound and grow interest and all of these things but it becomes a thing of having a strong discipline to be like i'm not touching this thing and seeing you know one of your investments that you invested a thousand dollars into get to fifty thousand dollars you get to a hundred thousand dollars and be like i'm not touching that because if i let that sit for five more years that can be worth double or triple or quadruple that so I think that's something also to think about when it comes to money. Like, do you often do things when it comes to accumulating money that you're going to get a high return from very fast? Or do you try to also do things when it comes to generating money that you're like, you know what? I might not be able to make a, a, a large percentage or I might not be able to make a large amount of money back. But I'm doing this thing because I know over time I'm going to get money back from it because we all say we want to live to be grandparents we all say we want to live to be old but when it comes to money i feel like we have a very short time span for how long something can make us money if and then we stop like if something doesn't make us money in a certain amount of time or a certain amount of money we often stop that thing or we often don't care about that thing anymore but you have to understand a lot of these individuals that are making a lot of this money are doing things that are gonna make them investments over time. I'll never forget Beyonce. She was set to perform for Lyft and they first offered her money as far as like a certain amount of money as like dollars. But she offered instead and was like, no, you can pay me basically like in stocks or Bitcoin or something like that. And she made double, the, like she exponential the amount of money that she would have made if she would just been paid that one time now when she first said that obviously it wasn't worth as much but then over time that thing is now even still generating her money from one performance so i think it's important to think about it like that like you have to have a certain amount of discipline to be like okay right now i'm gonna halt to get better and more in the future um, but I definitely tell people like, and I try not to be, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to be a financial advisor, but at the same time, I'm starting to get an understanding of being rich versus being wealthy. And as I'm getting older, I'm just thinking like, do I really care about all these riches? Do I care about keeping up with the Joneses? Because another thing is too, I feel like when you're rich, you always have to keep up. Like you're constant, you lose so much money with a rich mindset because you constantly have to keep up. You got the newest phone this year. You got to get the newest phone next year. You got the newest shoes this year you got to get the forget this year this season you got to get the newest shoes next season it's a thing of you always having to keep up contrary to if you don't really care about appearances if you don't care about you necessarily what you drive or necessarily what you're wearing not so much so that it has to be rinky dinky either like I don't want people to think oh well, I don't want to walk around looking crazy I don't want what no you could walk around looking nice and put together but it doesn't necessarily have to be high fashion you don't necessarily have to get everything new all the time maybe there's a time period where like okay once a year i'm gonna get new this and new that right i'm gonna get me a new coat once a year i'm going to get me a new pair of shoes or whatever the case may be once a year once every two years like i'm a big advocate also when i do spend money or i feel like a lot of money on something especially shoes or whatever it's because i'm wearing them shoes three to four times a week so yes i might spend 200 dollars on a pair of shoes but for me personally it works for me it's, it's to each its own i might spend 250 or something like that but i'm not really too pressed about it and nowadays i feel like that's the average but i'm not too pressed about it because i know i'm gonna get a wear out of these shoes i know that personally i'm not one of those people that's like if they if that company drops a new shoe i'm like oh i need this color too like i'm perfectly fine with what i have and also i'm not too worried about people being like wasn't you just wearing them shoes yesterday wasn't you just wearing and why do why do i care like, even on my car i know all y'all probably like girl you always talk about a damn car my car i told y'all in other videos how i thought i went a new car i put it on my vision board all this other stuff i don't care my car gets me from A to B. My car does what it has to do. The moment that my car stops getting me from A to B, the moment that my car stops, yes, I will get a new car. But what's the point of me always getting a new car just for appearances? What's the point of me? I don't know. I just feel like it's a thing of keeping up. And now that I've gotten older, I'm starting to notice like people who are more so rich, right? People who, no shade, but always a designer, all these other things. Like a lot of times you also notice too, those are the people that really aren't wealthy. Those are the people that really don't have it. Why? Because they're spending all of their money on these things, first and foremost. And then it's like, why so much so you feel like you got to show it to me? Like, I feel like 
when it comes to Bill Gates, when it comes to Jeff Bezos, like these people that we know, right, you know make money, you often see them in no designer. Not saying it's not, but it's it's a calm, a calm flex, if you will. They're wearing the, the white tee, they're wearing the khakis, they're wearing the black, it's almost a uniform kind of thing. So much so because it's like, they don't have to, not saying they don't buy things that are of high value with different things like that. But at the same time, I feel like, it's just figuring out what do you care about. And I think that's something that I'm also noticing too because it's just a thing of like trying to keep up with the Joneses and figuring out what do I want to do with my money. And I feel like it was a point for me is like I was going to my max for everything as far as where I live, as far as what I do. It was always at the max and I feel like at the end of the month I was always like dang where did all the money go? And I don't have money for investments and it feels like money at the end of the day I feel like I'm just losing more and more money every year. I'm spending more and more money every year and I don't know for me it was just getting stressful i was confused and once i started really learning the difference between being rich and being wealthy living below my means investing a lot of this money saving some of this money but doing things in which the future me would be happy we hear it all the time people be like if you would have invested ten dollars in bitcoin in what 2010 or 2008 or something it'll be worth like 100 million something like that crazy or a million dollars like we think of that stuff like it's not possible to be us but it is and i'm not saying your investment is going to be worth 10 million dollars but even if you would invest it you know when everybody's getting an extra 600 dollars during covid if you would invest it a hundred dollars or every single paycheck when you got an extra 650 dollars how much that would be thousands of dollars right now tens of thousands of dollars if you would invest it even in like a um a very low yield type of investment and so I, I don't know, I've just been thinking about that more lately. But another thing, I don't want individuals to feel like, oh, you have to want to be wealthy. Like you you, you can't be rich. You can mix it around and do what you want to do. But I, I, I want people to ask themselves, when you're spending money and when you're doing things to get money and also lose money and when you're having these big investments and having these big things, do you feel as though you are spending money as if you are a rich person or a wealthy person? And do you think that is sustainable for the life that you want for yourself? It really depends on you. What kind of life do you want for yourself? What kind of life do you want for your family and different things like that? But me personally, I've been veering more towards wealthy because it's just like, I can be, I don't necessarily need to be making a hundred million dollars a year to be happy. I don't necessarily need to be making a billion dollars a year. We convince ourselves we have to make all this money and da 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 da. But a lot of people will be comfortable making a hundred thousand a year, a hundred thousand dollars a year, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, living below their income. You don't need the biggest house on the street. We convince ourselves we need these big mansions and these big things. You don't need all of those things to be happy. Sometimes those things are stressors to you. Like you don't need all of those things. And I don't know, I just been asking myself about that lately. Like, do I really need to go on vacation every single month? Because I think also sometimes we, we want these things because we see them on social media, but then it's like, am I even gonna appreciate these things? Like, I feel like I wanna go on vacation because it's like, oh, I feel like I need a vacation. I've been working hard. I've been doing this, I've been doing that. But if you could go every single month, will you lose the value of vacation? If you could buy million dollar jewelry every single month, will you lose the, the appreciation for that? I don't know, it's just big questions I've been asking myself when it comes to what do I wanna do with my money and what do I see for myself? So comment below, which do you feel like you are right now when you spend money, rich or wealthy? And how do you feel like you wanna be? And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.